here we are, chapter four. This is the last example for chapter four, and then we'll move on to chapter five, I promise. So in case you're just getting in here, what I'm doing, this is my uh, physics course series. We're in chapter four. Uh, this whole chapter is about forces that we can explicitly calculate. Okay, so the forces that we've looked at so far are essentially the gravitational force, um, this force due to a spring, we're gonna do that today, uh, the motion of a mass outside of the Earth with real gravity. Uh, so in, in the modeling, the force on an object outside the Earth, it's, it's kind of hard to just make a graph. It's better to visualize the whole thing. So I want to go back. This is an example I did early on for the momentum principle and numerical calculations, but modeling the motion of a mass on a spring. So uh, I'll, I'll link that early video in the description down below. But imagine I have like a mass on a spring and I'm hanging it and I pull the mass down a little bit. And my hands are, you can't see it, but my hands are actually doing this, okay? And I pull it down a little bit and let go, and it oscillates up and down, that's when I model. And we wanna visualize it. And so I have this nice picture that I took on a previous post of a spring. Isn't that nice? Okay. So let's think about the physics here. Don't freak out, there's a lot of equations, just calm down, okay. So this is some mounting point up here, this little blue dot. And down below, the red dot is the mass. And I have a spring. And I drew that spring myself, so it's not perfect. But important thing is to imagine that this spring has some unstretched length. And the more I pull it down, the greater I stretch the stretch force, the stretch distance S, the greater the force. Now, the key thing here is I need this as a vector force. So I can't just do the negative Ks. That's not gonna work, because that's not a vector. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have this unstretched length of the spring, we're gonna call that L0. The vector from the top point down to the mass is the vector L. So it's the same as, a, as R would be, right? Your position vector. Um, the unit vector in the direction of L would be L hat, that's obvious. Okay, so how do I get the spring force? I know that the normal expression would be negative ks, and then I'd multiply it by that unit vector to get it into a vector form. So what's that, ve that value of s? So this, very, this s is gonna be the difference between the magnitude of L and L naught. So that's how I get this. And now I just put it in for s. Now I, I promise you, there are half the time I mess this up and I get it backwards. Uh, you know, I'll do L0 minus L or whatever. I'll put the minus sign or something will go wrong and it'll blow up. And so that might happen. I'm just warning you, okay? Then we'll fix it. And mistakes are fine, okay? You can't get everything perfect the first time. Okay, so once we have that force, we're going to do the same thing that we did before in a numerical calculation. And that's to first calculate the net force. In this case, I have that frictional, that, not friction, the spring force. And then I have the gravitational force. So I add those two together. And then I use that to update the momentum. And then I use the momentum to update the position and I update time. I do it, do it, do it, do it, get again, again, again. And it's gonna be great. I, it's gonna be great. You don't know how great this is gonna be. Okay, so here is my program. I need to start with bigger windows, but oh well. Maybe one day I'll learn. Okay, so let's just start doing some stuff. I'm not, uh, first we need the vector G, obviously. Uh, I'm going to need the spring constant. I'm going to pick 5. I don't know where I got that number from. I just picked it. I need my mass of, um, let's say, 150 grams. Kil kilograms. Yeah, it's 150 grams. Um, I need my unstretched length. I'm just imagining in my head it's it's like 11 centimeters. I'm picking that. Okay. Okay, so now let's start making some visual things. Remember, we can use the power of vPython to visualize motion. And in this case, um, it makes 3D representations. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make that little top piece that the spring mounts to. It's not real, it's just a, it's just a dot up there. It will help to have it up there. I'm gonna call it top, it's a sphere. And let's say its position is uh, vector zero, neg, uh, L0 over 2, 0. So that means that the middle of the screen will be at the origin, and this will be a little above that, and that's fine. 
Uh, the radius, let's see, so if the spring is 11 centimeters, maybe this should be, have a radius of 0 0.005. And I'll leave it as white. And let's just run that and see what it looks like. Okay, so they're lovely. Isn't that lovely? It's a lovely little mass. It might be too big, but that's fine. Okay, now let's make the mass. It's also a sphere. Its position will start off as just vector uh, 0, not negative 0, 0, L0 over 2, 0. And the radius will be a little bit bigger. Let's have it 0 0.01. I feel like this is too big. It's twice. And, and the color is red. Let's make it yellow. Yellow just shows up better on the background. Negative. It's messed up. Okay. Lovely. I think that's good enough. Okay. Now, we do want to make one other thing. I want to make a spring connecting this mass to this mass. So let's just say spring. I'm going to do this the easy way. So there's a built-in object called a cylinder. And so the cylinder has a couple properties. One is the position, and that's where it starts from. And that's just going to be the top mass. And then the second is the axis, which is the vector from the beginning to the end. So that's just going to be uh, mass.pos minus top.pos. And the radius, I, let's just see what it does with the radius. Okay, too big. So I need to tell the radius too, and let's make the radius the uh, radius equals 0 0.003. Excellent. Make it a little bit smaller, 2. Okay, so there's my spring. See, that wasn't so hard. Okay, now we need to do some real stuff. So mass.m equals... I think you can do that. I don't know. That looks weird. M. Um, what else do I need? Oh, I need mass.p equals vector. Let's put this as mass.m times vector 0, 0, 0. Uh, so it starts from rest. And so if you notice here, I put the mass uh, at the equilibrium position, but there's a gravitational force on it. So it's actually going to fall down. And so it, I can start it from rest. So that's fine. T equals 0, dt equals 0 0.01. I think that's good. While, let's do it. I always like to start off with some finite time limit while t is less than 5, because in case things go terribly wrong, I only have to wait 5 seconds. Uh, this rate statement right here, this tells it how many loops to do per second. I and mean, if, if I want it to run in real time, it'd have to be 100. Okay, now let's calculate the spring force. I'm just going to type in that equation. Negative k times, oh, nope, L equals uh, mass.pos minus top.pos. That's that vector from the top of the mass to the bottom of the mass. And it's in the loop. So that means that it's going to get redone every time. That's important. Okay, now I can do times mag of L, that's the magnitude, minus L0 times norm of L. And, and again, this might be terribly wrong. I make mistakes all the time. Okay, now I can say F net is going to be FS plus mass dot M times G. And it's plus because these are vectors. Yes, the gravitational force is in the negative Y direction, but that's built into there. Okay, so this is the better way to do it. Next up is update the momentum. So mass dot P equals mass dot P plus F net times dt, update the position, okay, I should probably just run this for you and show you what happens, but I'm going to, so that's uh, t equals t plus dt, let's just see if it runs, let's save it, uh, 3d mass spring, Do you think it's going to run? Okay, it did. Okay, it went a little bit further than I wanted it to. So let's let's do this uh, 15. Let's see what happens. Okay, that's good. I'm pretty happy with that. And a little bit higher. 
17. But you notice that the, the spring's not moving because we never updated that. That was the one I made that mistake on purpose. So I need to, I don't need to update the position because the position is mounted at that top point, which does not move. Uh, so I just need to update the axis. So I can say spring.axis equals uh, L. No, let's, I could just do L. I think that's, let's see. Let's see what L up, update a little bit differently. I think it might be a little off, so. Not good enough. There you go. Boom. What do you think about that? Okay. Let's make it even better. So, let's do this. Uh, copy that. Comment up. I don't like to just delete stuff because... Now, Helix is a built-in function. I think this will work just like that. No. Okay. I got to look up a Helix. Okay, so let's do that. Let's go over here uh, to Glow Script. I can't remember the parameters. And then click on Help. And then work with 3D objects. And there is a... No, 3D objects. A Helix. The length... Axis... Radius. I did do radius. Position... Did I misspell Helix? Sorry, that's not it. No, Helix position. Why doesn't it show it? Oh, the radius is too small. Let's try this. Yeah, there you go. It's too thin. Okay, let's change up to three. That's too big. Okay, back to two. Let's do one. Okay, I, I'm I, I like that, but let's just fix one more little thing. Thickness is radius divided by 20 as a default. I can change that. Thickness. So I, it would be this divided by 20. So let's say 0 0.001. No, let's make that bigger. Uh, that's too big. Okay, so let's see. Three. But you see there's an art here. Okay. Excellent. I am super pumped up and I'm happy. And you should be happy too. But wait, you are not going to believe what I'm going to do next. You think you're going to believe it, but you're not going to believe it. Okay. Let's do the following. Why? I mean, th just watch. Just watch. Okay, the initial momentum. Let's do this as uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.01, negative 0.1. So instead of releasing a rest, I'm going to give it some initial velocity in the x direction and some velocity in the y direction and some y velocity in the z direction. This thing's going to go crazy. And these values may be too big. So let's just see what happens. Yeah, look at that. Whoop! Wait, wait, wait for it, wait for it. Make trail equals true. Check that out. And it is in 3D. Oh, wait, the Z, the Z direction's not moving. What was my Z coordinate? Negative 0.1. So that's X, Y. Why is it not moving in the Z direction? Let's say, let's just say 0.2. It should move in the z direction. That, oh, it is the z direction. Okay, it's just tilted. I don't know what else to say, except this is super awesome. You know, you think, okay, it's just a normal mass on a spring, but it doesn't matter. I, I made that spring as a vector force. It's going to be pulling always back towards that uh, pivot point up here. So... This is fine. This is real. And in fact, you can actually even model a pendulum with this by making it a really stiff spring. I mean, it's the same thing. It's the same calculation. Let's give it different initial conditions.
Okay, I don't know if I, I don't think I should say anything else because it's that awesome. I'm just going to stop right there. Um, like this, subscribe to this, ringy bell this thing. Uh, we're going to move on to chapter five, which I can't remember what I put it was. So it's probably like forces of constraint. So calculate the forces. But that's it. You go do your homework. You go play with this stuff. You're never going to learn it if you don't play. So play and break stuff. And I will see you on the next episode of Just Enough Physics. Talk to you later.